సార్ మై నేమ్ ఈస్ కుమార్ స్వామి హరిహరన్ మై క్వశ్చన్ ఈస్ టు జగీర్ నాయక్ సార్ వన్ ఆఫ్ మై ఫ్రెండ్ పర్చేస్ ద కురాన్ అండ్ కేమ్ టు మై రూమ్ ఐ వాస్ సో ఇంట్రెస్టెడ్ అండ్ జస్ట్ ఐ వెంట్ టు హ్యావ్ ఎ లుక్ ఆఫ్ ఇట్ ఇమీడియట్లీ he told me that this is the holy book since it has been written by the god directly you should not touch till that date whenever i am moving to his house till now i am not touching it is it the right or wrong i don't know since he is following correctly and one more question sir and uh, another friend this time he is moving to his house for celebrating the ramzan he told hello hariharan i am moving so by hearty love i went to hug him then immediately he told no no we should not hug then i asked him whether today is the day we should not hug i don't know about it that's why i asked today is the day we should not hug then he told no you should not hug at all to a muslim this is the another friend i asked then he told no it's wrong answer you you, know, you can hug when, from that time whenever i am hugging i feel myself guilty and uh, shy i am doing the wrong thing please clarify my doubts sir my brother has asked two very important questions two great misconceptions the first question of his was that one of his friends said when he went to touch the quran no you cannot touch the quran this is the word of almighty god is it true that non muslims can't touch the quran there is a misconception as this conference is not only for the non muslims as ra said it's even for the muslims there's a misconception amongst the muslims that a non muslims cannot touch the quran and this misconception is based on one verse of the quran of surah waqia chapter number 56 verse number 77 to 80 which says that this quran has been revealed by allah subhanahu wa taala and none shall touch except those who are pure now based on this verse of the quran may non muslims they assume that the muslims are pure non muslims are impure they cannot touch it this you should know the nuzul e quran when was this verse revealed this verse of the quran was revealed when many non muslims objected and said that prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam knows billah he gets this revelation from the satans so then this verse was revealed that none shall touch except those of pure talking about the quran of lohe mahfuz if you read tafsir ibn kaseer it gives the clarification that this is talking about lohe mahfuz the quran which is there in the seventh heaven none shall touch except the angels the arabic word there mutahharin mentioned refers to the angels not only pure in body but those who are sinless so that quran which is in lohe mahfuz none shall touch except the angels so if a satan wants to pick up these parts of the quran he cannot come close to it it doesn't refer to mere tahara which we talk about wudu if this verse really means none shall touch except those in wudu any non muslim can purchase a quran for 150 rupees and touch it and the quran will be proved wrong so this verse doesn't talk about the wudu it talks about the lohe mahfuz which none shall touch no human being can also touch except the angels and i always encourage that the best book you can give the best message is the message of allah subhanahu wa taala my speech is useless what human being can explain better than allah subhanahu wa taala creator we have to share the message of the quran and there are some people who say brother zakir okay fine give only the translation not the arabic i said fine okay that also you want to give give at least but i prefer giving along with the arabic why because in the translation they can make a mistake if the mistake is that it can be attributed to allah subhanahu wa taala wrongly and falsely for example some of the urdu translation say of surah luqman chapter 31 verse 34 that no one besides allah knows what is the sex of the child in the mother's womb if a non muslim who has medical knowledge today with ultrasonography we can easily come to know what is the sex of the child i being a doctor i know that 
the translation is wrong. No way does Allah use the word sex. What Allah says, no one will know what is in the womb of the mother, talking about the nature of the child, whether the child will be good or bad, whether it will be bane for society or boon for society, whether it will go to Jannah or Jahannam, hell or paradise. No one knows. All the scientists with the best equipment, they cannot predict this. So the translation is a mistake. So if we give the Arabic text, anyone who knows Arabic can testify that the translator has made a mistake, not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I personally prefer giving along with the Arabic text. And if, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala holds me responsible, I'll be in good company. You know why? Because the beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he, when he gave the message to the non-Muslim kings, he dictated ayahs of the Quran to the sahabas. And one of such of the letters is already present in Koptaki Museum in Turkey. And there Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he had dictated the verse of the Quran of Surah Al-Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 64, which says, Kul, ya hilal kitab, say, O people of the book, ta'ala ila kalmitin sawa imbayna baynakum, come to common terms as between us and you, which is the first term, Allah na'uda illallah, that we worship none but Allah, wala nushrika bihi shayyam, that we associate no partners with him, wala yattakhiz abad dun abad dun arba ban minun illa, that we erect not among ourselves lords and patrons other than Allah. If then they turn back, Fakulu Shadu, say he bear witness. We are not Muslim, that we are Muslim is bowing over to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam dictated letters containing verses of the Quran which were given to non Muslims. Many non Muslims, you know, some of them accepted Islam, alhamdulillah. Some tore the letter, some even trampled it beneath their feet. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave verses of the Quran to a non Muslim, he tramples it beneath his feet. So, brother, there's no problem at all. You being a non-Muslim, you can read the Quran. We Muslims, we sit like cobras on the Quran. It is not our property. It is everyone's property. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is revealed. You can very well read the translation. Thank you. Read the translation. If you think something is worth accepting, accept it. If you have any queries, you can ask the person who has knowledge on the Quran. You can touch it. There's no problem at all. If anyone says that why can't Muslim touch? You ask him for proof. There's no verse in the Quran or no hadith which says that you cannot touch. Now coming to your second question, that can a non-Muslim embrace a Muslim? Or can a Muslim embrace a non-Muslim? Brother, Alhamdulillah, there's no problem at all. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he embraced many non-Muslims. Our Sabahs, irrespective of whether they're black or white, rich or poor, yellow or brown, king or pauper, there's no problem, Alhamdulillah. This is good. It shows universal brotherhood. There's no problem at all, brother. Embracing, you can very well embrace. A Muslim can embrace a non-Muslim. A non-Muslim can embrace a Muslim. There's no verse in the Quran Hadith which says that Muslim and non-Muslim can't embrace. This is a misconception. Your Muslim friend, he does not have proper knowledge of Islam. That's why he might have told you out of ignorance. But in Islam, you can very well embrace. There's no problem. Thank you very much, sir. Brother Hari Haran, please come to the stage. Dr. Zakir Naik will present him a translation of the Quran. You know, you can say that Zakir Naik himself has given me a translation of the Quran. <laughs>